Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to welcome you all at the first of the evenings dedicated to the special guest of the Central European Forum Olomouc Kashat Museum in Budapest. I'm personally very glad that we have the opportunity to meet at least in the all embracing virtual space. However, I believe that during the autumn months, uh, we will be able to organize at least one discussion platform in Olomouc as well. This program is part of the CEFO 2021 Triennial Universum. For more information about the events, follow us on our page Triennale CEFO CZ and other platforms as well. Let me now introduce the institution itself, Kashak Museum, as well as our two speakers who kindly accepted the invitation. The Kashak Museum was established in 1976. It preserves intellectual as well as material legacy of Lajos Kashak, but is also interested in contemporary avant-garde approaches and developments. Themes reflected include the establishment of Central European avant-garde itself, their existence between politics and art, the use of new art forms, and also the over overlaps with everyday life. The aim is not to update the strategies, but to generalize them and, as such, to place them in a broader framework. In that regard, it is highly innovative. As part of the uh, of the triennial, the Kashag Museum will present a series of online lectures and programs linked to a new permanent exhibition. It will also include discussion with foreign experts. Uh, now the guests itself. Uh, Edith Shashvari is an art historian and museum curator. She studied history and art history in Pech and Budapest and museum curating in Vienna. Between 2010-2020, she was director of the Kashag Museum in Budapest. Her main research areas include modernism, the historical avant-garde, the neo-avant-garde and cultural policy in the 60s and 70s. She has edited and contributed to numerous publications and catalogs. She is one of the authors of the book called Illegal Avant-Garde, the Balaton Boglar Chapel Studio of Jordi Kalantai between 1970 and 73, published in 2003. She has curated many exhibitions presenting both Hungarian and international artists, in 2011, she was the curator of the exhibition Kashak, the ambassador of the avant-garde in the Berlin Mission Gallery. In 2015, she was inv invited to the MoMA's CMAP seminar in New York. Between 2014 and 16, she initiated and ran a research program in the Kashak Museum entitled Hungarian Art in the 60s and 70s, as a result of which the volume Double Speak and Beyond was published by Thames and Hudson in 2018. Mersche Palaseredi holds an MA in higher story from Etwesh Lorand University, where he's currently studying for his PhD. He's the head of the department in the Kashag Museum, where he works since 2015. He is a member of research group Lajos Kashag Avant Garde Journals from a Disciplinary Perspective, 1915 1928. Uh, yes, yeah, sorry, since 2016. His research focuses on Hungarian avant-garde art and history of Lajos Kashag magazine MA, which means today, in Vienna between 1920 and 1925, with special emphasis on its international networks. He has curated exhibition in Kashag Museum in the Virag Judith Gallery in Budapest and the Janusz Panonius Museum in Pech. He has also worked on exhibition in the Hungarian National Gallery and the Berlinische Gallery, and his work has been published in several academic journals, exhibition catalogs, and multi-offer volumes. After the lecture, uh, the space will be given to questions from the audience as well. It's possible to use the chat for these purposes, uh, which is active on both uh, our platforms uh, we are currently using for the stream, which means Facebook and YouTube. So uh, this is all from me for now. I will uh, co-moderate uh, the discussion itself at the end of the lecture. We have uh, something around 15 minutes, 15 minutes ahead of us. So let's enjoy it. The edit, Mersche, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. And thank you very much for your kind introduction um, I would like to thank you and all your colleagues for your generous invitation and the opportunity to present our museum's current uh, research exhibitions and, and current programs at uh, uh, your triennial as a special guest. Um, first of all, I would like to give a brief overview of what 
we are plan planning to to uh, do during the coming weeks and months. Of course, these uh, uh, special times call for special measures. And so we had to rethink the, uh, the whole set that we're going to, to present to you now uh, through an online space and an online uh, version of our presentations which also has its merits because this way we can also make new uh, technical adjustments and create a new virtual space for conversation. Uh, we're going to have altogether five presentations, five occasions to visit the Kashak Museum virtually through the, uh, the guided tours and talks of our colleagues. The first uh, presentation now is going to be about the history, uh, the general uh, idea behind and the current programs of our museum. This is going to be held uh, by Edith and me. Uh, on the 7th of October, we're going to have a virtual guided tour through a three-dimensional uh, virtual exhibition in our permanent collection, which is focused on Lajos Koshak and especially on his uh, internationally renowned avant-garde journals. Uh, this virtual exhibition is just finished. We're just making the final touches right now. And we're really happy that uh, we have the opportunity to, to, to present this virtual version of the permanent collection uh, so soon, uh, just after it was finished. The third uh, presentation is going to be held by our colleagues who work in the museum education department. And we really plan to, to have some uh, kind of an interactive and uh, more uh, uh, playful setting during this presentation. Uh, we have been working with them since uh, two years now. And of course, because of the pandemic and uh, the, the closure of the museums in 2020, we had to rethink the whole uh, idea of museum education and move uh, most of our uh, programs into the virtual space. And this is also an opportunity for them to present their new inventions which connect the uh, students and the general uh, audience interested in Hungarian avant-garde with the museum and the museum's collection through the virtual space. The fourth presentation is going to be about our two main uh, research and exhibition series, one of which is focused on life reform movements in the interwar period in Hungary, and the other one focused on uh, Koshaks and uh, other avant-garde editors' uh, journals during the uh, 1920s and 1930s. Uh, our colleagues are going to give an overview of both the, the general directions of their research and also uh, give some uh, general ideas about the exhibitions that we had uh, during the past years and the ones which are uh, also planned for the coming years. And uh, the last uh, uh, presentation or the last event of this series is going to be hopefully held, uh, as Barbara have already said, in person in Olomouc. And it's going to be uh, a round table discussion about the topics that were raised during the past four presentations and also the topics which are generally linked to current uh, thinking about Central European or Eastern and Central European avant-garde. Uh, we have to, of course, uh, um, count with the possibility that this one is also going to be held online but right now we are still uh, hopeful 
that we will be able to join you uh, personally in Olomouc for uh, an evening discussion late November this year. Um, we really hope that you're going to enjoy our presentations. And once again, we are very, very much uh, thankful for the invitation. And we really hope to uh, see you as soon as possible in Budapest, in the Kashak Museum, at one of our uh, new uh, temporary exhibitions or one of our programs. And now I would like to hand the microphone over to Edith, who's going to start the presentation about the history, the concept, and the future plans of the museum. Uh, welcome everyone to this very special event. And uh, firstly, I would like to say that we are grateful to Barbara and the Olmutz Museum for the invitation. It's a great pleasure and honor uh, for all of us to have uh, the opportunity of showing in this framework the activity of the Kashak Museum. Um, in my short presentation, uh, I, I would like to show you how we have been trying uh, to reposition the Kashak Museum uh, since I took over as a director more than 10 years ago in October 2010. Um, I, I, don't want to, I don't want to talk so much about the, the specific details, uh, but, but rather about the principles uh, that we uh, kept in view when, when we draw up a new strategy uh, of the museum. Um, the next slide, uh, please, Mersha. <laughs> Uh, if I uh, were to try to summarize what the Kashak Museum is, um, I could say it is a contemporary institution of the Hungarian um, avant-garde. Um, actually, the Kashak Museum is the only site in Hungary uh, which uh, devotes it, its research to the historical avant-garde, uh, applying an approach uh, that is both contemporary and historical, and it works with professionals of, of different fields uh, who take a contemporary view of historical artworks and documentation, and uh, also with uh, contemporary artists. Uh, furthermore, we actively collaborate uh, with the audience, especially with those groups of society uh, who are stakeholders in, in our research topics. Um, what does the term uh, contemporary mean in this case, you might ask, uh, since we are dealing with a fundamentally historical material? Uh, the next slide, please. <laughs> um, something that is very important to our work is the contemporary perspective. Um, this means uh, looking at historical material uh, through the lens of current phenomena and questions and comparing it with the society of today. Um, our exhibitions programs based on historical research uh, also involve contemporary artists who can uh, contribute their peculiar approaches to the interpretation, um, just as the work uh, of contemporary artists exhibited in the museum um, uh, reflecting on, on Koshak's oeuvre and, and issues the, the avant-garde. Um, on the other hand, the museum is also trying to, to face the challenges of, of today's world uh, by raising issues that can activate from, from different perspectives uh, this, this historical material. Um, of, of definitive consequence for the museum is its position on the increasingly globalized contemporary uh, cultural market. Uh, the museum's own history uh, also partially defines its present identity, uh, position, and opportunities, and um, is a source of cultural capital for activities um, in involving systematic self-interpretation. Uh, we also address the issues that arise concerning the museum's presentation of the avant-garde as a phenomenon which is highly critical of institutions. As a result, we must deal with the contradictions and tensions uh, that arise when researching and presenting the avant-garde in, in a museum space. At the next one, please. 
Um, the Kershek Museum is a small um, and culturally specific museum. It is located on the first floor of an old um, uh, Baroque building, the Zichy Castle, in, in one of the outer districts of Budapest in Obuda. Um, organizationally, uh, the institution is a small unit um, uh, of the most prestigious museum of Hungarian literature, the Petrofi Literary Museum, are located in the city center. Um, the history of Kershev Museum goes back uh, to the state socialist period. It was founded in 1976, uh, 10 years after Kershev's death, uh, he died in uh, 1967, as a memorial museum of the kind uh, that is dedicated to exhibiting the works of a single artist. Uh, it was one of several similar memorial museums uh, set up in Hungary under a government policy aimed at presenting canonized figures. Uh, what does a memorial museum actually mean? Um, the cultural policy of the time identified certain artists as, as representing values they approved of and promoted them by means of dedicating museums. Uh, by the way, uh, several living artists uh, were given a memorial museum in, in these decades, uh, such as the Hungarian-born uh, Victor Vazarelli, Ameri Gotot, um, or the sculpture most favored by the state, Imre Varga. Uh, but uh, this was not such a simple matter in, in, in Kosciak's case. And, and the idea establishing a museum for him uh, provoked stormy discussions uh, within the Communist Party. Um, Koshak, who was born in 18, 1886, was a highly versatile figure. Uh, the next slide, please. Uh, painter, writer, designer, editor of several magazines, movement organizer. In the 1910s and 1920s, Kershev was one of the central figures of the Hungarian avant-garde movement. He defined much of its program. And um, in the rest of the 20th century, or even today, he went on to serve as a model for radical or, or critical thinkers. Uh, all this has earned him a significant place, not just in the art history, but also on many other fields in, in a really broader sense. Uh, his figure, uh, personality, and wor work are still widely popular even today. Um, in Hungary, he was a role model, for example, for the contemporary activist movement on the on the 2000s of the 2000s. And there are a lot of uh, subcultural phenomena, circles with, with different backgrounds in Hungary that base their activities on the spirit of Korsak. For the Kadariad era authorities, uh, the, the era war, was named after Janusz Kadar, uh, the general secretary of the Communist Party. Um, so for them, Kashak posed a constant problem both during his life and after he died in 1967. Um, two years uh, be before his death, uh, he had been granted the highest cultural honor for his literary activity, but his central artistic focus was his abstract painting, and that was regarded as problematic. Uh, this also shows uh, that the cultural regime of the, of the time from his separated Kashyak's literary and artistic work, of which only the literary part was accept acceptable uh, to them. So actually, they highlighted a part of this uh, multifaceted earth, and the literary activity was all they were willing to accept. Uh, but at the same time, his work attracted a really intense interest, and the new avant-garde generation of the 1960s and, and 70s had him in particularly high regard. These were young people who looked on him as a father figure. But uh, in the official artistic discourse controlled by the cultural regime, his art, his, his abstract, abstract painting was completely excluded. Um, 
it was um, um, so his, his last exhibition uh, was in a peripheral space that was only open for a few days in, in 1967 uh, in the year when he died. Uh, but um, but there was uh, um, uh, really a, a large number of uh, people interested in Koshak's work. Uh, this this even can be regarded as a kind of demonstration in the former cultural context of the time. Uh, so all in all, uh, the next slide, please. <laughs> yes, and and the next one. Um, so all in all, this formed the background uh, to the museum's first 13 years operation during the, the, the directorship of my predecessor, uh, Dr. Fenris Choplar, um, establishing Koshak's place as a visual artist uh, was therefore the constant objective of him uh, during this long period. He steadfastly promoted Koshak's work and played a key role in presenting uh, his memory. On the other hand, he completely monopolized the Kashak material and didn't really allow others to have access to it. And, and this shows uh, that himself, he himself wanted to form the new image of Kashak and appropriate the Kashak narrative. And for us today, this phenomenon can be a very interesting research topic. Um, thanks to his effort, uh, Koshak was eventually included into the canon as a visual artist and not just a writer. His activities were mainly limited to correcting the one-sided image of Koshak, uh, which had been set up during the Hadar era. Uh, because the canonization of Koshak had previously taken place along literary lines, uh, which precisely shows that why the Memorial Museum itself was founded in the context of a most prestigious literary museum in the 1970s. Um, next slide, please. Um, by the time I, I took over Fenian Chopla's position a few years after his death, um, the figure of Koshak stood before us as, as a monument of the Hungarian avant-garde. Um, there were a lot of questions we, we had to face when we started. Uh, first of all, what we could do with this monument that Koshak had become? And what could we do with a, a museum confined to preserving the legacy of one man? How could we present Koshak as a, as a living figure? Um, what new angles could we take on his work? And how can we represent his multifaceted activity in its complexity? Another question that was always in my mind, how such a small museum in a small country like Hungary can extend its horizon beyond the national border and uh, possibly answer, answer uh, and possibly offer some answers uh, to the global challenges uh, facing museums and professionals. We realized the, the need to map out a new way forward. Uh, if the conceptualization of Koshak was to remain poorly on the level of respect and appreciation uh, his legacy would soon be petrified and, and lose its pro, uh, power. Instead, while presenting the appreciation and understanding of Koshak's greatness, the museum staff sought a uh, new means of critical analysis. The key word in the museum's new self image was openness. Openness in every sense, intellectually, to the international scene, uh, to a wider public. Um, in 2011, a new team took over the operation of the museum. It was a new beginning, a clean sheet. Uh, we were three of us. Um, on the slide, you can see my colleagues. Uh, we started with Judith Chatlosh and Katalin Söke, who is sitting in a cup and coat because sometimes in winter there was no heating in the museum. Um, it was a really, very really successful start. We built up the permanent exhibition, which opened in 2011 
In the same year, we organized the big exhibition, Kosciak exhibition in the Berlin Shea Gallery, uh, together with Collegium Hungaricum in Berlin, and together with designer Imre Lepsini, uh, who uh, we we won to 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 major international awards for the museum's image, uh, which um, which further uh, straightened our reputation. Um, our starting point in uh, 2011 was uh, that Koshak is an internationally internationally recog recognized uh, representative of avant garde in Hungary. Uh, this was uh, the basis for making uh, the museum uh, a focus point for all kinds of modernism research in Hungary. But it was also clear to us that uh, for a Kashak centered research uh, to be comprehensive, uh, we, we must examine modernism and avant garde in the wider sense, uh, viewed from today's perspective. Uh, because uh, we uh, now look on modernism as a closed period, a uh, part of 20th century cultural history. As such, uh, we must redefine it as a contemporary problem, which requires a change of attitude. Uh, this, this prompted us to set up a Kashyap related research uh, program uh, and exhibitions uh, to, to cover questions of historical modernism, not only in a Hungarian context, but also internationally. This could be uh, the key uh, to, 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 um, to the museum's positioning within Hungary and then abroad, uh, producing results that could be um, um, channeled into those of other centers of, of modernism research. Um, the development of the museum's research, uh, and the next slide, please. Uh, um, the museum's research project, uh, research project was taken to a higher level. Uh, oh, next, next one, please. No. <laughs> yes. Please. Uh, the, the development of the museum's research project was taken to a higher level when Gabor Dobo and Mersh Seredi uh, joined us and later uh, historian Esther Bolash uh, in, in 2014. Um, they developed the museum's scientific, scientific research program uh, that examined our issues from an international perspective and through inter interdisciplinary uh, research. Uh, Mersha will uh, talk more about um, all this. Um, one of the most important questions uh, to address in this regard was, uh, what is the proper framework for discussing a Central European avant-garde, national, uh, regional, or global? Uh, this was one of the... Um, me springs of the opening uh, to take the Kashak interpretation out of the national framework, because um, as a basis for research into Kashak and the avant-garde in general, the national context and national interpretation appeared unsuitable. Um, a crucial question was how to link museum materials and collection to a policy of openness creating wider links with the public and professionals. Um, we focused on themes, uh, on, on themes uh, that were uh, themselves about community building and which rather show the context of Koshak's of uh, the social, sociological and historical context in which his of was, was created. Uh, these two major themes were avant-garde journals and the 20th century social movements. Uh, this later exhibition series created and professionally developed by Judith Chatlosh will be presented in, in a separate lecture in this series. Um, so the, the, basic, uh, the basic idea was uh, to reconstruct Kashak's network in a series of exhibitions over several years. Uh, this mainly featured his magazines uh, the avant-garde magazines were a channel of uh, vigorous communication among 
artist in the international scene at, at that time. And it is also important to say that Kashar never worked alone. In fact, uh, his most significant activity was what he did with other people, building connections and running groups like editorial boards and artist circles. Um, and not least, we try to find um, and involve parallels of this kind of circles today. Uh, from the very beginning, the, the museum has been cooperating with those circles and groups of the, of the civil society that are in some way uh, socially active and as such uh, link, uh, link the, to the traditions of, of Kosha's heritage. Uh, one of Judith Chaplow's important projects was um, to work on the housing movement of the 20th century together with people uh, who are living with homelessness today. Next slide, please. Um, the new museum staff also examined uh, the question of its relations with, with the public. For museum visitors, the museum had uh, had a, had a far far been a small local venue situated situated in a slightly peripheral peripheral district of Budapest. Uh, actually, the museum was a kind of secret place uh, during the Kadar era. So an important aim was aim was to break out of this uh, confinement and open up uh, to a broader public. Um, it is always very difficult for a small museum to attract a big audience, uh, but thanks to our colleagues, uh, Renata Sikra, Head of Communication, uh, Jofi Marton, Marta Mi, and, and our artist partners, Peter Forgac and Orsi Bono, uh, the museum is always able to offer innovative approaches to the challenges of, of reaching the public. But this activity of the museum uh, will be shown in a separate uh, presentation. Um, the Kashak Museum um, wants to uh, arouse uh, the interest of society as a whole. As such, it, um, it identifies its mission as being a museum that is informative and open to education and the part, uh, participation of visitors with a clear and attractive message to the public. Uh, the essence of this message is that the Kashak Museum is the contemporary museum of the Hungarian avant-garde, a place uh, which, just like Kashak himself, sees the importance of addressing contemporary artistic and social issues. I thank you for your attention, I, and I give over to Mersi. Thank you very much. Um, for the second part of the uh, presentation today, I would like to just very briefly talk about um, our current work with, with Koshak's uh, avant-garde journals as, uh, as a part of a complex research and exhibition and publication project which is uh, of high importance for me as well, because uh, I joined the team of the museum, as I did have already said, uh, especially through uh, the research into avant-garde magazines. Um, here we have a photo of an exhibition which was called Koshakism. This was uh, set up in our uh, main building in the Literary Museum in the city center as a part of a three-part exhibition series in 2017 and 2018, which uh, was held on the occasion of the, of, uh, the 130th uh, centenary of, of Koshak's uh, birth. And uh, this was a, supposed to be a memorial exhibition series uh, in three connected museums, uh, which were all part of the, of the Petrofi Literary Museum. But uh, actually this three-part exhibition was a great opportunity for us 
uh, already uh, two, three years into our research to, to set up an overview of uh, the already mentioned internationality of, uh, uh, or international uh, embeddedness of Koshak's magazines in the 1920s, which uh, has already been researched and uh, the links or the connections have been established, but it has never been shown uh, to the broader public in Hungary which is quite an important and, and also very interesting uh, fact uh, if we look at uh, big uh, museums in Europe and in the world uh, dealing with the historical avant-garde or the neo-avant-gardes. We can uh, all, always see the, uh, the stress on the international uh, networkedness of uh, of avant-garde from the uh, uh, 1900s up until the 2000s but still if we look at uh, individual cases and i think that edit has uh, already uh, clearly demonstrated the, this in the case of koshak and koshak's reception uh, during the 1970s and 1980s and even the 1990s so if we look at individual cases and we look very closely, you can see that, uh, that actually uh, those uh, connections and those networks should uh, uh, well be uh, uh, um, researched and interpreted uh, individually. And if you look into the details of these networks and if you look into the details of uh, of the of the international intentions of uh, the avant-garde in the 1920s then you can also find out that uh, all these ideas that we have about the avant-garde in general could very well be uh, uh, much more detailed and uh, in several cases um, a new narrative can be uh, written just through the help of uh, of the analysis of these international connections and uh, we think that this uh, close look and close reading of the avant-garde networks and the avant-garde magazines themselves are of much importance for us especially in in central europe or east central europe because uh, if we look closely to these, uh, to these networks and to these connections, and if we try to find the common ground and the, and the common uh, interest in the, uh, in the avant-garde movements of the 1920s, 1930s that emerged in Central Europe and East Central Europe, then we can find that these networks actually were much more stronger and, uh, and much more bilateral than uh, um, we thought uh, from a point of view which uh, generalizes these uh, ideas and generalizes the, the whole uh, system of uh, avant-garde networks. So for us, um, the research into avant-garde magazines and, uh, and especially Koshak's magazines during the 1920s is in a way uh, 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 an opportunity to reconnect with, uh, with Central European and East Central European uh, colleagues. And uh, this is in a way our uh, task during this research project, which has been going on since uh, 2015, to trying to set up a new uh, way and a new space for thinking about uh, Central European avant-garde. What we did besides uh, research and exhibitions uh, was a series of international conferences which were held in the Koshak Museum in 2015 and 2016 uh, now we have uh, had a, uh, a small break between conferences because we have been working on the proceedings 
of the last conference, which was uh, in 2016, uh, commemorating the centenary of, of Dada. And uh, the conference was focused on, on Central European uh, uh, Dada phenomena. Um, but next year, we're also going to have our next international conference on, on, the, uh, on the topics of, uh, of center and periphery in, uh, in magazines and especially avant-garde magazines uh, together with the Museum of Fine Arts in Budapest. Uh, among with, uh, with conference and research, we have also been trying to, to develop our ideas uh, already during the, the research project and formulate these new narratives through uh, different publications, which we are always trying to publish in English as well, besides Hungarian. Edith has already mentioned uh, the um, Publication on the far right on this slide, Double Speak and Beyond Art in Hungary from 1956 to 1980, which was published in 2018 by Thames and Hudson. This has been the research result of a research project going on for more than two years. And uh, this is actually a volume which has been focusing on post war uh, avant garde or neo avant garde topics, but it also includes the positions of, uh, of socialist modernist art. And, uh, and this has been a, a very important part of the research projects that has been going on in the Kashak Museum. The two volumes on the left are uh, publications dealing with, uh, with avant-garde journals from the 1910s and 1920s. We have uh, already published the proceedings of our first conference from uh, 2015, and also the volume called Art in Action, which uh, is also av available already online. And this is the first overview of our current uh, research into Kashak's avant-garde journals. We have also been working with, uh, with exhibitions, as I have already mentioned, in which we are trying to work together with contemporary artist uh, Clara Rudas on a way to present these avant-garde journals not as uh, artworks or art objects, but rather as, uh, as documents which could tell us a, a narrative which could, uh, which could uh, be interpreted uh, not only in a, in a Hungarian, context because most of these magazines were published in Hungarian, but also in an international context. And we're trying to set up these links between the uh, Hungarian and the international uh, uh, contexts. And uh, in this regard, it's, it's very important for us to create contemporary networks between Central European uh, museums and curators and researchers. And we were very happy to partake in two important traveling exhibitions on Central European avant-garde's uh, uh, in 2018. Uh, uh, one of these exhibitions was uh, uh, held in the Vienna Belvedere and uh, the Bozar in Brussels. It was curated by uh, uh, Alexander Klee, and uh, it, uh, the title was Beyond Klimt, and the, the uh, exhibition itself was focused on uh, uh, interwar uh, Central European avant-garde. So was the project and exhibition series Years of Disarray, which started at the Museum of Art in Olomouc. Uh, head of curatorial team was Karel Schrupp, and uh, uh, this whole uh, series went on to Poland, Slovakia, and finally to Hungary in 2020. And uh, at both exhibitions, uh, magazines had an important role and an important place. We were very happy that uh, Koszak 
and, uh, and the whole research project, which was initiated by the Kashak Museum, was also involved in uh, the creation of this exhibition series. To uh, close up, to sum up uh, this uh, first presentation about the Kashak Museum, as the new uh, director of the museum since uh, late 2020, I would like to uh, set up just a, a few objectives and a few tasks which are ahead of us and which we are trying to uh, uh, go forth with uh, during the coming years. First of all, uh, I would like to stress that we're continuing with our research projects in, uh, in new ways as well, which were not uh, included in our research before. Uh, one of the most important part of our endeavor is uh, digitization. We're working on a digital edition of Kashak's journals, which uh, were published in Budapest, in Vienna, uh, during the 1910s and 1920s. And we are also just starting our work with the correspondence of Lajos Kashak, which is uh, a big part of our uh, uh, collection in the Kashak Museum. We have uh, more than 2,000 pieces of correspondence uh, from Kashak's estate, and this has never been processed yet, uh, just used for research. But now we are starting our uh, uh, research on this, uh, on this uh, collection and we're trying to, to create a digital critical edition of Koshak's uh, uh, correspondence, which is a very important uh, collection of avant-garde editorial correspondence, which includes letters to and by, uh, uh, for example, Tristan Tsarati of Andusberg, Elisitsky, and so on and so forth. We're also trying to, uh, to further develop our regional cooperations. And we're trying to, as I have already said, set up new uh, international conferences. And uh, we're also very happy that we have the opportunity to present our projects here because uh, this virtual space created by the Olomouc Museum is also a great uh, a space to, uh, to set up new regional uh, networks and cooperations. In our exhibition series, which is going to be uh, discussed further in the fourth uh, 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 presentation of this series, we're trying to, to set up new uh, focus points as well. One of this is uh, inter interdisciplinary research. We are trying to, to open up to new uh, media. For example, we're going to have an exhibition about avant-garde music during uh, 2022. So next year, next summer. Uh, we're also trying to focus besides Koshak on less known figures of Hungarian avant-garde. For example, our next exhibition, which is going to be opened uh, mid-November is focused on two poets, one of whom was the sister of Kashak and her husband, who was also a co-editor of one of Kashak's journals. But these guys have been already nearly completely forgotten and they are out of the Hungarian canon, literary canon. So we are trying to focus on those artists, those figures, whose uh, archives are still existing. Uh, we're trying to acquire these uh, archives, these estates, and we're trying to present their work in a critical format in exhibitions, temporary exhibitions in the museum. We're also trying to work together with contemporary artists, not only as designers for our exhibitions, but also as uh, presenters as exhibitors of the museum. We're trying now to, to set up a framework for presenting contemporary art in the museum on a regular basis every year. And our general objectives, as Edith have already said, has been to open up the museum to new audiences, to new groups, to international, 
visitors to to uh, general audiences, students, and also researchers, museum professionals. Right now, we think that uh, one of the great tasks and uh, and uh, projects ahead of us is to further develop the digital experience. So open up the museum to digital visitors uh, digi by digitizing our collection, by creating virtual exhibitions, by creating uh, online guided tours and so on and so forth. And hopefully, as you have seen in the, in the photo shown by Edith, uh, we will be able to, uh, to reconstruct the building of the museum, which is a Baroque castle, which has been uh, 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 reconstructed during the early 80s last. So it has already been uh, a long time since the last renovation of the building. And uh, even though this, uh, space is quite challenging for us and it's also in a way funny to uh, to to try to set up an avant-garde museum a modernist museum in a baroque uh, space in a baroque castle uh, but i think that uh, this is a is a very unique opportunity and uh, we we really try to to make it work in a way that uh, creates uh, also a dialogue between uh, the architectural space and the content of the museum. I would like to thank you all for your attention and uh, I would like to give uh, the microphone back to Barbara and open up the discussion with the questions. Uh, thank you, Versha. Thank you, Edith. I think it was absolutely lovely. Uh, <laughs> uh, again, I was thinking about your institution and your museum because I also liked in your presentation how you connect the personal level. Uh, I mean, the people who work in the museum itself, uh, the projects, uh, exhibitions, uh, research, and so on and so on. And have you been able to uh, put it together whole in a historical context of avant-garde? Uh, Mersha, I think you can put your camera on. Uh, we are just uh, now going through the discussion, so it's not need to, uh, to stay off it. Um, do you like your work? Do you like the Kashak Museum? Do you project a good, good future for this kind of institution? Because I think we all find ourselves in quite unstable uh, position. Is, institutions are shaving. Uh, we are thinking about the future for ourselves, uh, for uh, European culture, I guess. So do you see the, see the bright uh, future for your institution? Edith, <laughs> maybe first, and then me. So it is. It is I think it is a, a, a difficult question. By but I think uh, the museum is, is is in a very good hand, um, and um, so uh, I I believe in the in the new gener generation. So <laughs> I hope it it will it will work. Um, all our projects and uh, and the museum, so we we survive. <laughs> and I think that uh, yeah, it's a uh, uh, I'm optimistic always, but uh, it's also really hard to to um, not to make your work relevant in today's society but to keep it always in mind not to uh, not to focus only on uh, a scientific or a, or one uh, a project or uh, or not to uh, not to uh, um, focus only on those aspects of uh, research and exhibition creation and publication which has been already set up. And I think that this small museum and this small staff who work in the museum, we are very much uh, enthusiastic about uh, finding new ways of connecting with our audience, of finding new ways to 
transmit the knowledge which has been uh, collected in the museum. And we are quite adaptive to, to new media and new technology, which is also important uh, for a museum to, to stay relevant. The, uh, the main uh, problem is always, of course, uh, time and funding, which uh, has to be uh, provided and, uh, and also uh, our, um, our general uh, um, feeling towards uh, the whole uh, context, cultural, political, uh, societal context of the museum. But it's yeah. always changing and it's changing very rapidly. So we're just trying to adapt to new situations. Yeah, that's right. Uh, actually, there were one question in the uh, in the chat, which were just following the situation of the museum in Hungarian uh, context, I guess, in Hungary as such, as the museum was established in the 70s and runs till 2020s, right? So it's quite, um, uh, well, yeah, this is quite interesting politically, I mean, quite interesting area, I guess. Uh, what I like quite a lot in your work is that you work as a research institute, at least this is my understanding of the situation, but on the other side, you are still the museum and the openness, the aspect of openness through the new media, of pure, through the education probably, also through the archive and digitalization is something uh, I'm interested in as well. So my another question would be, uh, how does this work together? Are you able to connect educational levels with exhibitions and so on? Do you have a good, um, good um, experience with that? Because also maybe one more thing, uh, and this is also something we so much admire in avant-garde as such, right? In 20s and 30s, the connection of through whole, not just Europe, but I guess the whole world, the con communication, the openness to life as such. Uh, this is something we are interested in all in avant-garde, I guess. We're actually very uh, lucky that uh, we have a team uh, who work with, uh, with students. Uh, mainly uh, high school students, but also elementary school students. Uh, uh, or Petty and Orshi, they're going to, to hold a separate presentation about their work. And they are very creative and very innovative in several ways. And they are also coming from, the, uh, from a humanities background. And we're always trying to create <clears throat> educational programs together, so not separately, but also involving the, the new uh, ideas and the new perspectives, which are risen by the, uh, the research uh, publications or temporary exhibitions, which are created in the museum. And also we have a very close relationship with several universities. So, uh, we have already been uh, uh, holding uh, um, university courses, uh, so lectures in the museum, uh, together with the Museum of uh, Applied Arts, the Mohlina University and the, and the, uh, the Otvash Lorand University's uh, uh, humanities departments. So I think that these all could be viewed uh, together. And uh, I think that these efforts are, are always very uh, fruitful. And these, uh, these efforts always create new uh, connections and new opportunities. And actually some of those students who has been involved with either the educational department or the university lecture series they came back to the museum as, uh, as either uh, interns or visitors, or they, were, they became more interested, not only in Koshak's uh, life, or Koshak's works, but, but also in, a, in the critical thinking about the avant-garde. Yeah, I think this is actually another quite interesting thing. I know you don't like to 
uh, up-to-date avant-garde or something like this, but to make it more general and uh, to work with specific principles of avant-garde as such, as, as I understand it. And I like this approach also uh, quite a lot. Uh, my another question would be, um, because I think actually the young generation is really interested in avant-garde and um, there are quite a lot of reasons, but do you see the correlation also between historical avant-garde, new avant-garde and contemporary art somehow, because you are working with all these elements in your exposition and your projects? I know about the exhibition of Adam Albert, of course, but many others. So uh, do you see some sort of a co correlation there? Uh, yes, we, we wanted to e examine uh, these different uh, phenomena uh, uh, together. So um, um, to, to compare uh, the, the historical avant-garde with the, with the new avant-garde uh, in the 1960s and 70s and, and, and the current um, uh, phenomena uh, of, of the contemporary avant-garde. Uh, and um, so I think it, it is very important um, to see uh, this uh, thing uh, uh, together and uh, like um, um, in, in a holistic way, actually. And, um, and um, so, so for example, we, we try to, that's why we try to involve uh, uh, contemporary artists to our program because uh, their experiences uh, are, are, are very important for us uh, for for the histo also for the historical research and um, and uh, and uh, and working uh, with with artists with contemporary artists who who uh, reflect uh, to the to the Kashak's oeuvre and and the, the avant-garde uh, the historical avant-garde um, it, it could uh, give us a new, a new aspect and a new uh, uh, point of uh, views in, in our historical research. Mersha, would you like to add anything mm -hmm. to this? Would you like to choose one artist you uh, like to work in past <laughs> and it was uh, fruitful, I guess? <laughs> I think it's always very interesting to see these connections. So our most um deep connection is with uh, Clary Rudash, who's a painter and uh, uh, she's uh, creating uh, abstract paintings currently. Uh, but she has been the designer of our exhibitions uh, on avant-garde journals since uh, 2015. Uh, so we have created already six or seven exhibitions together. And she has been uh, uh, working with us from the beginning. Uh, so she's not only a uh, graphic designer for the exhibition, but she also partakes in the creation of the, of the whole concept of the exhibition. And I think it's really important to see not only these formal aspects or uh, topical aspects of, of relations, between historical avant-garde, neo-avant-garde and contemporary art, but also to see these uh, uh, philosophical or ideological uh, interferences. And uh, we're actually, we're trying to focus on these aspects. So we're not working with artists because they uh, create abstract works just as Koshak and other avant-garde artists did in the 1920s, but we work with them and we, we try to, to include them in our program and we try to, to create a, a space for these artists and intellectuals because we see that uh, those ideas of, uh, of a socially engaged and... Uh, and um, technologically and philosophically open art, which was uh, the main idea behind the avant-garde of, of Koshak in the 1910s and the 20s and the 30s, uh, could also be found in, in contemporary thinking. But of course, today, the, uh, these, uh, uh, these borders between, uh, between art and activism uh, politics and life, these are much more blurred than they were in the, in the 20s. 
So right. everything is much more complex now, and right. it's really much harder to 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 see these very strict ideas which could be separated from each other as they were in the in the 20s when when uh, all of these magazines all of these artists all of these groups had their own manifestos and they constantly tried to express what they thought about art and uh, and life and politics now it's uh, it's a completely different situation and we also have to adapt to these these new situations Okay, thank you very much. This is another quite interesting point, actually. Uh, you were when we are talking about borders. You were also mentioning the project uh, for the future, uh, referring to center and periphery relationships, but also the personalities around the uh, main spectrum, I guess. So, what about what does this mean actually, and not just in Hungarian context, but also in a context of the, I don't know, broader field, Europe at least. Um, the differences between East and West. Uh, what does it? Uh, what does the Central Europe mean actually? If there is something like a Central Europe and Central European culture, can you refer to this uh, at least briefly? Um, <clears throat> we were talking about that um, that, um, that the, the international character of, of the avant-garde is, is very important and. Um, and uh, we, we try to find uh, new ways um, to, to, um, to contextualize uh, the Hungarian avant-garde. And, uh, and, and the new, um, mm, a new way of, of this uh, thinking is um, uh, thinking in, in, in a regional context is, is, is for, for us, <laughs> uh, is, is very important uh, because um, um, I think um, um, as, as we, in our project, in, in, in the double speak uh, project, uh, try to find uh, new ways and new aspects uh, for, for the research, um, uh, these, these Eastern European uh, uh, or original uh, context uh, was a new way of, uh, of rethinking uh, this, this whole, whole story uh, with the avant-garde and uh, not only, not just uh, the, the new avant-garde, but, but also um, um, it could be um, a good uh, uh, starting point uh, also for the, the historical, uh, researching for the historical avant-garde. Okay. And it's important, I think, to, to keep in mind that, um, actually this is a topic that has been, uh, floating around for some years now. And uh, many important uh, theoretical and historical uh, writings have already been published about both the, uh, the topic of, of uh, uh, the political, the historical, the, uh, the sociological, uh, uh, history or context of Central Europe and and also the differences between what we think about Central Europe or Eastern Europe now uh, and what has been said about Central Europe uh, before the Second World War. And I think that there is actually a, there is actually a, a shift or a change uh, of the, of the whole concept of Central Europe or East Central Europe or Eastern Europe uh, during the 20th century, which has to be considered. But of course, if we are talking about regions and, and this regional aspect, I think that uh, uh, this could be used as a general frame for for new interpretations or new discussions, but we must not think of Central Europe or Eastern Europe uh, in a relation with Western Europe uh, as the periphery. So we have to reconsider this whole concept and this has been going on uh, in art history, in literary history, in social history 
for some years now. And I think that it is a very good starting point to discuss further. And, uh, and I think that the project Years of Disarray has been a very important new step towards a redefinition of this whole uh, concept of Central European avant-garde, which could be, of course, uh, discussed even further. And, uh, and it's really important to, to, to talk about these issues and to, to try to redefine this whole region and the, the story of, of art in this region in relation with uh, each other and not separately. Yes, I think this is really a difficult question because um, um, the, the question uh, has uh, arised that why is there no regional approach, an, an appropriate regional approach? Um, because of uh, the, the rivalization of, of the nations. So because a nations uh, define themselves uh, relative to each other and, and confront each other on, on, on the pattern of, of political rivalries. So uh, can we regard the, uh, Central Eastern Europe as a, as a unitary area like Western Europe uh, and, and Russia are? So there are uh, very difficult questions, I think. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I was actually also aiming to years of this area because I find it as a quite a nice platform we can all meet and think about the situation as it is through the exact aspects, uh, not just in theory, I guess. So I'm very uh, happy that you were on board on this and we can uh, follow this kind of work to the future, I guess. Uh, there were <laughs> one quite uh, nice and funny question in chat. Uh, if uh, you see any relationship between uh, the museum itself and the uh, building uh, you use for yourself, but I think Merchel already talked about it a little bit. I like this kind of aspect of Baroque, um, Baroque Palace and, um, or Chateau and the institution, which is absolutely different. And I remember my experience when I visited you a few years ago and went through this historical building to the completely new installation, uh, which were quite, uh, quite beautiful in that time. So my la last question would be, and I think it should be also the invitation for another lectures, uh, is uh, focus on a new uh, exposition you are working on. Um, how does it look like? Um, so currently we're working on an exhibition to be open mid November. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about uh, two poets, uh, Eji Uivari and Sándor Barta. They, uh, they were a couple, married. Uh, Eji Uivari was uh, the youngest sister of Kaszak, and uh, Barta, uh, her husband, he was involved in uh, the uh, editing of the magazine Ma in the 1910s and the 1920s. So it's a really interesting couple. They, they created really outstanding uh, uh, Hungarian Dada poems and uh, they also edited uh, Hungarian language proletkut uh, magazines in the early 20s in Vienna. They then uh, exiled into the uh, Soviet Union and unfortunately, uh, they died uh, there. Borta was executed and, uh, and Erzsi Uivari died soon after, uh, before the, the Second World War. And these are actually the sunken or forgotten authors of the Hungarian avant-garde. We were really happy that uh, the heirs of, of them uh, approached us last year, actually before uh, COVID and uh, they showed us the, the archives, which is really outstanding. And it has been in the family since the uh, early forties. And uh, now we have processed these materials, manuscripts, correspondence, photos uh, previously unseen, and also many, many, many journals magazines, publications. So we're working on this exhibition right now, which we really plan to create as a virtual exhibition as well, uh, 
also supplemented with uh, with videos and uh, and uh, um, English translation of some of these uh, these materials which we have found. And we're working on another exhibition which is going to be opened uh, for the summer next year, which is about avant-garde music. And it's really a, a, a new topic for us. We're working together with uh, 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 musicians and theoretical uh, 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 researchers to, to create an overview of of not only Hungarian but uh, but also international uh, aspects of of uh, of music and the avant-garde. Yeah, I think this is this is something we are looking for all to see and hear, and this is absolutely lovely. We really hope okay, that so uh, you could be you would be able to to visit Budapest mm -hmm. uh, very soon. Uh, we really hope that the the pandemic soon will end and uh, we could travel again. Yeah, that would be absolutely lovely. Maybe this is the good opportunity to mention our small talk about a possible quiz or something like that. And there might be free tickets to visit Kashag Museum in Budapest. Yes, definitely. There will be. <laughs> so With yes, no but... time limit, so you can come <laughs> anytime. You are very kind. Thank you very much. Yes, let's all visit Kashar Museum in Budapest. Uh, I would like to thank you both because it was a lovely evening. I think we've learned quite a lot and I look forward to meet you again uh, in online space uh, October 7th, again at 7 p.m. in the evening uh, with the presentation and discussion. Uh, actually, I think it's going to be a virtual tour, right? Yes, in the permanent exhibition. In a permanent exhibition, so let's enjoy it. Uh, thank you all. I would like to thank you uh, to our public as well. <laughs> it was lovely to meet you and see you. Have a lovely evening. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Thank you.